Hi, my name is Kristen Max and I'm a guidance counselor at Mason High School. On behalf of the guidance department and staff of Mason High School, I'm happy to introduce you to the registration procedures for the 2013-2014 school year. So let's just start with a brief introduction. This year we're excited to announce that we have a new and improved registration process. It includes a collaborative effort between students, parents, teachers, counselors, and administrators. Through this team approach, we hope to assist students and parents in making better informed decisions regarding course selections. Why is this so important? Well, it probably goes without saying that the courses you choose to take and the grades you receive can have a major impact on what options you pursue after high school. Whether you plan to attend college, technical training, or join the armed forces, your high school curriculum and GPA can and will influence those decisions. We are fortunate to have many resources available to assist you in the registration process. On our website, makesandcomments.org, we have our registration videos, easy to follow 10 step scheduling checklist, sample course selector forms, also referred to as registration forms, graduation requirements, and frequently asked questions. Probably the best way to learn more about specific courses, besides talking to teachers, is to review our course catalog. I also recommend that you print a copy of the sample course selector for your grade level so you may follow along as I go through it step by step. Step 1. Filling out the header information. This is a pretty easy step that you shouldn't have any difficulty with. Simply fill in all fields. Please remember to list the student's phone number and email address as we will use that information to contact you over the summer months in the event of a scheduling conflict. Step 2. Selecting core courses. This is a very important step and one that should be made by consulting your parents and teachers. It's a good idea to have a conversation regarding your strengths, weaknesses, and readiness level when it comes to taking honors versus college prep courses. Research what the expectations are for each course and pay attention to the difficulty of your schedule overall. As a general rule, it's a good idea to challenge yourself more with subject areas that truly interest you. But the best way to ensure that you're making the right decision is talking through it with your parents and teachers, reading through the course descriptions, and also paying attention to any summer work that may be required for the course. On the registration form, you will bubble in one selection for each core area. The blocks column indicates the number of trimesters the course is scheduled, or in other words, the number of courses you will be taking. With five courses per trimester, there are 15 blocks per year that need to be filled. So for example, AP American History will be scheduled all three trimesters. American History, A and B, is over two trimesters, and Financial Literacy is a one trimester course. Also, please don't forget about other graduation requirements like ECA, health, and physical education. If you are registered for summer school, please select the appropriate bubble so we may better track graduation requirements. Step three, completing the elective section. This part of the scheduling process can be a lot of fun because you're able to choose from a wide variety of courses that may interest you. From business courses to performing arts, we have many options. Some things to keep in mind, one credit of fine art is required for graduation. And while foreign language is not a graduation requirement, at least two years of a foreign language is typically required for admission into most four-year colleges and universities. As you choose your electives, please do your research by reviewing the online course catalog as it will give you a detailed description of each course. It's never a good idea to choose a class simply based on its name or because a friend is signing up for it. 
Remember to make informed decisions and pay attention to the number of blocks you're selecting. Step 4. Obtaining teacher signatures and feedback. While we have always encouraged students to discuss course selections with their teachers, this step is absolutely critical in assuring correct placement. Your teachers are in the best position to evaluate your readiness level and moving on to more challenging courses. Having the discussion with your teachers about course selections will enable you to make informed decisions, thus reducing scheduling error and misplacement. Although not all courses require a teacher initial, we still strongly encourage students to reach out to all teachers and discuss course requests, even for electives. Step 5. World Language Mandatory Alternate If you have chosen American Sign Language, German, or French as your first choice world language, we also ask that you choose a second option in the event of a scheduling conflict. While we will make every attempt to get you your first choice, occasionally courses do fill up and or result in a scheduling conflict. Please note that Spanish and any second year languages do not require an alternate selection. In this example, the student has chosen American Sign Language 1A and B as their first choice. They have indicated Spanish 1A and 1B as their second choice. Rather than bubbling in a second option, we ask that you actually write in the name of the course as indicated. Step 6. Additional Alternates We take great pride in offering a wide range of elective options for students. However, creating a master schedule for over 3,400 students does not allow much room for error, and upon occasion, the demand of certain classes outweighs the number of seats available. Likewise, course offerings may overlap and cause scheduling conflicts. While every attempt will be made to ensure you receive your original schedule, we ask that students list at least five alternate course selections that may be used in the event of a scheduling conflict. Remember that these courses will not be used unless there is a problem with the original request. That said, please be sure that you are also making informed decisions regarding alternate courses as it is possible they may appear on your schedule. Step 7. Counting the blocks. Review your registration form in all selections. Count your total number of blocks, not bubbles. Your total block number should be exactly 15. Step 8. Student Signature. Students are required to sign the back of the registration form. By signing, you understand that it is your responsibility to ensure all graduation requirements are met and that you have scheduled the appropriate classes. Please be aware of our drop ad policy as well. Schedule changes will only be made in the following circumstances. Either you're missing a graduation requirement, you have incorrect class sequencing, or you're scheduled for fewer than five courses per trimester. Unfortunately, we can no longer accommodate elective changes. This is why it is so imperative that you make informed decisions regarding your course selections ahead of time. If you aren't sure what a class is about, reach out to the teachers or counselors to find out more information. Also, research the classes through the Mason High School course catalog available on the registration website. Step 9 is parent signature. We also ask that you consult with your parents on your course selections and have them sign the back of the registration form as well. This step is required before you turn in your form. Step 10 is turning in the registration form. All forms are due on March 21st and should be turned in to the homeroom teacher. Once the form is turned in, the high school counselors will review and enter the course information. Schedules will then be created based on the following. Whether or not the student has met the prerequisites for the course and the master schedule, including the number of course offerings and available times of course offerings. Every attempt will be made to ensure students receive their first choice with electives. However, in the event of a scheduling conflict, Counselors will utilize alternates listed on the registration form as discussed in Step 6.
Now that we've completed the last step to the registration process, let's review the timeline. March 11th through March 14th, counselors and administrators will review the registration process with all current 9th and 10th graders. Students will receive their official colored hard copy course selector forms, which will need to be turned in to homeroom teachers. On Tuesday, March 19th, we will have a parent transition night for all students in grades 9 through 11. We will be reviewing the registration process and providing information on recommended courses based upon student interests. Then, on March 21st, all forms must be turned in to homeroom teachers. We understand this is a lot of information and you may have many questions. We ask that you visit our website, masoncommons.org, as we have created several resources that can help you as you go through the registration process. For answers regarding student readiness level and placement recommendations, please contact your student's teachers. Also be sure to attend the Parent Transition Night on March 19th. You may also reach out to the high school counselor should you have any specific questions regarding your son or daughter.